just a marker to keep for a time. Just a little bit of a minute. To leave your own dream, ambitious, rash, violent, children, and people. and very undermining to the institution of the army. And I think this is what ultimately led the CC to turn against him. Now, whether or not he had been planning for this from the beginning is doubtful. The other question Egyptians have to confront is whether al Sisi is sincere when he says he doesn't want to leave Egypt. He would not, of course, be the first military man in modern Egyptian history to turn to politics. Gamal Abdel Nasser, the leader who dominated the Egypt of General Al Sisi's youth, remains a powerful symbol for many Egyptians. Despite being defeated by Israel in the Six Day War of 1967, he's still adherent to many nationalists, and with General Al Sisi, he instituted a crackdown on the Muslim Brotherhood. His legacy has again become part of Egypt's political debate and army. With the election of the Muslim Brotherhood, the victory of the Muslim Brotherhood, there was significant increase in the number of pictures of Nasser on the streets. And I remember distinctly after the infamous constitution of the creation of November 2012, in which Morsi effectively declared himself above the law, that Nasser made a very, very strong comeback. What is your view of the question of whether he is really going to be happy to step back when some kind of elections are taking place, or do you think he's actually in for the long term? He, he wants to be an astronaut in the sense of taking over the country. It would be very difficult to imagine that he doesn't have ambitions for him himself to lead the country as a civilian. Khaled Fahmi sees General Al Sisi as a tactician who adapts to circumstances rather than a strategist. Generals of Wilders, like Sharifa Zahua, see someone who takes the long view and holds to his course. The general certainly hasn't been deflected from his current objectives by the need to spill blood in pursuit of them. Perhaps one day, Abdul Al-Sisi will reveal a master plan, like his father with his clever confections of wood and love with The profile was presented by Edward Sturton and the producer was Helen Merriman. You can listen to more editions of Profile on the BBC Review 4 website. Nick Miller will be here with the general weather forecast in a couple of minutes, but first, here's the shipping forecast issued by the Met Office on behalf of the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency at 1725, today, Sunday, the 25th of August. There are warnings of gales in Trafalgar and Fitzroy. The general synopsis at midday. Lowe's, just south of Iceland, 999, and France, 1011, both losing their identities. Highs, 500 miles west of Fitzroy, 1032, and Scandinavia, 1,025, both slow-moving with little change. The area forecasts for the next 24 hours. Viking, Norfolk Syrup. Southerly, 4 or 5, increasing 5 or 6. Occasional drizzle, moderate or good, occasionally poor in the north. Southwood Syrup, 40s. Southerly or southeasterly, 4 or 5. Fair, moderate or good. Cromarty, 4th. Mainly southerly, 4 or 5. Fog patches, moderate or good, occasionally very poor. Time, east 3 or 4, veering southeast 4 or 5. Fog patches, moderate or good, occasionally very poor. Dogger, Fisher, German Bight, Humber, Thames. Mainly east or northeast 4 or 5, fair, moderate or good. Dover, northeast 4 or 5, occasionally 6, moderate or good. White, Portland, Plymouth, Biscay. North or northeast, 4 or 5, occasionally 6 at first. Showers, moderate or good. 
South Fitzroy. Northerly 5 to 7, occasionally gale 8 in the southeast. Showers, moderate or good. North Fitzroy, sold. Northerly 4 or 5, occasionally, occasionally 6 at first. Fair, moderate or good. Lundy, Fastnet. Northerly 4 or 5, occasionally 6 at first. Fair, moderate or good. Irish Sea. North 4 or 5, becoming variable 3 or 4. Fair, good, occasionally poor later. Southeast Channel. Northerly 4 or 5, fair, good. Northwest Channel. Northwesterly, back in westerly or southwesterly 4 or 5. Rain later, good, occasionally poor later. Rockall Mallet. Westerly or southwesterly 4 or 5, increasing 6 to the north. Occasional rain or drizzle, moderate or good, occasionally poor. Hebrides. Southwesterly veering westerly in the northwest later, 5 to 7. Occasional rain or drizzle. Moderate or good, occasionally poor. Bailey, west or southwest, 5 to 7. Rain then fair. Moderate or poor, becoming good. Fair Isle, south or southwest, 4 or 5. Occasionally 6. Rain or drizzle. Fog patches, moderate or good, occasionally very poor. And Faroes, southeast Iceland. Southwesterly, 5 to 7. Decreasing 4 or 5 for a time later. Rain or drizzle, then fair. Moderate or poor, occasionally good. That's the end of the shipping forecast. Now let's take a look at the general weather forecast with Nick Miller. Hello, it's largely fine weather with occasional sunshine will carry over into Monday. We've seen a few showers in the past few hours pop up across parts of southern England. They've got a few more hours life left in them going into the evening, maybe the old heavy one, but very hit and miss. Most places are staying dry. They're going to die away eventually to leave a dry night across the United Kingdom. Some clear spells around, but also lots of low cloud and hill fog developing from eastern Scotland across most of England into East Wales. Those in the range of 10 to 14 Celsius. Now the detail for Monday. And in southwest England and southeast England, a grey start, soon brightening up with sunny spells. An isolated shower or two popping up in southern coastal counties, mostly from Hampshire westwards. Most staying dry with temperatures in the low to mid-20s, as high as 26, possibly 27 Celsius on the south coast. In eastern England, the Midlands and northeast England, the day starting cloudy, gradually brightening up, some warm sunny spells in the afternoon, although some patchy clouds may linger towards parts of the coast of northeast England. Highs of 23 in Birmingham, Norwich and Leeds. In Wales, a sunny start in the western counties, cloudy in the east by the afternoon, all mixed with a mix of cloud and sun, 23 degrees in Cardiff. Northwest England, dry, plenty of sunshine, 20 in Carlisle. Northern Ireland, dry, rather cloudy, sun bright or sunny spells, Belfast at 20. Southwest Scotland and eastern Scotland, sunny spells, warm, 23 on the Murray coast. Northwest Scotland, clouding over, but rain spreading in later in the day. That's a forecast from John Smith. Thank you, Nick. The six o'clock news is next, but first here's Liz Barclay with news of the programme that celebrates the best of the week's radio. There are dangers lurking in this week's programme in the form of liquid corned beef, failing food supplies and catastrophic performances in front of unappreciative audiences. But if you can stomach all that, on the plus side, we're celebrating too. The pioneering women who led the computer revolution and the power of recovery of the human body and spirit. To join me, Liz Barclay, this evening, BBC News at six o'clock. This is Corey Caulfield. Good evening. The United Nations says its chemical weapons experts will fear tomorrow to the site of an alleged gas attack in the suburbs of Damascus. It said Syria had promised to observe a ceasefire during the inspection. The United States said the Syrian decision to give the UN team access had come too late to be credible. Russia said assigning blame too soon would be a tragic mistake. The wreckage of the helicopter that crashed off Shetland has been lifted off the sea bank. The Syrian government has said it will now allow United Nations inspectors to visit the site of a suspected chemical weapons attack. Hundreds of people are believed to have been killed by poisonous gas in a suburb of the capital Damascus last week. The UN has said its team will start work in the area tomorrow. 
International pressure has been mounting on President Assad to allow immediate access to the site before evidence of any attack deteriorates. Yolan now reports from Beirut in neighboring Lebanon. It's been four days since amateur videos of Syrian children choking and fighting for their lives and young men suffering horrible convulsions first caused international outrage. The UN called for an immediate thorough and impartial investigation into what happened in neighborhoods of eastern Damascus. Although there was a team of 20 UN chemical weapons inspectors already in the city, it's taken until now for a deal to be struck so that they can go to the affected areas. The announcement was made on Syrian state television. According to the newsreader, the Syrian foreign minister who negotiated arrangements with the UN's disarmament official Angela Kane wanted to show that rebel forces had lied about the Syrian military using chemical weapons. The UN is due to begin collecting evidence on site tomorrow. The Secretary General said it was the highest priority for his team of experts to find out the facts of this suspected poison gas attack. Syrian forces and opposition fighters are expected to cease hostilities in the area so the inspectors can finally get to work. They're under intense pressure with growing signs that Western countries are looking at options for possible military intervention in Syria. Earlier, a Syrian official warned this would have dangerous consequences and would inflame the Middle East. A senior US official has described the Syrian offer to allow weapons inspectors access as too late to be credible. The French Foreign Minister, Laura Fabius, said there was no doubt the Assad regime was behind the attack. But Russia warned that assigning blame ahead of the UN investigation would be a tragic mistake. A Washington correspondent, Virginia Badianatha, reports on the response there to Syria's announcement. The announcement by Syrian authorities to allow UN weapons inspectors in has been met with skepticism in Washington. A senior administration official said if the country had nothing to hide, it would have granted...